everyone, my name is Christina, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can take your designs from Procreate and cut them out on your own tech laser. So let's get started. So I have my new document created in Procreate. It's about 3,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels. Now, this is just the size that I prefer working with. You can choose whatever you prefer. We're going to be working with the symmetry tool today. So if you come up here, you see where it says drawing guide. If you enable this, you have an option to edit. You click edit. So now you have a grid going on. Over here, we see symmetry. Click that. And we get some options. This is the option that I'm going to be using. This is the default. You can see my line right here. So, you know, when we draw on one side, it's actually going to correlate to the other side, which is exactly what I want to do in this tutorial. You can adjust, you know, if you want your line to look a different color, if you're using a background or, you know, your opacity, you have some options here. I'm just going to click done. And now we have our panel. If you come over here, we see it says assisted. The assisted layer is telling us that this symmetry tool is on. This drawing assist option is on. See? In this tutorial, I'm actually going to be making a kitty face. You know, there's a lot of cat lovers out there. I know a lot of cat lovers myself. Figured this would be a great place to start. So what we're going to do... We're going to draw a little nose. We're going to do some whiskers. And you see how when you draw on one side, it actually correlates to the other. So this is perfect. You know, for, for a lot of my artwork, I use this tool when I'm doing simple shapes, simple characters. And I find it works pretty good. Now, say you're working on it and you get your rough and you're like, oh, you know, I, I want to edit it. I want to change some things or, you know, I want to redraw it. What I do is I come over here and you see this, this N, you click on it, so you can actually adjust your opacity. I'm going to use this as the base layer. I'm going to want to make some changes. I'm going to want to kind of refine it some more. Well, you know, I'm putting it at 12%. Click off. Now we're going to want to make another layer, but when you see the new layer come in, it doesn't say assist, which means if you try to draw, you're not going to get that assisted drawing. So you have to come back here, click... Enable the drawing assist, and now when you draw, it'll be there. Now that I have my design, I'm going to want to bring it into my computer so I can make edits and convert it in a format that my laser cutter can actually use. There are a couple ways that you can go about exporting this before I jump on the computer. I personally prefer to export it as a PSD. Because sometimes what I often do is I work in different layers, so I will put, you know, 10 designs in one document. And when I bring that over, it's just easier for me to click through the layers in Photoshop. However, there are also workarounds for that. If you don't have Photoshop and you're using, you know, a program like Illustrator, or I even believe Silhouette Studio, they have live trace options. So you're actually able to export a transparent PNG file and bring that into your software that you can then live trace and use. I will show you how I do both methods. Um, but this design is fairly simple. It's not a layered design, so you really shouldn't have to worry about finagling it too much. When we go to export, there's a couple different options, like I mentioned previously. If you come over to share... And you see we have these options. We have PSD, PDF, JPEG, so forth. We're going to be doing a PSD. It's going to ask us to, you know, where we want it to go. I always airdrop it. You can hear it popping up over there. It's sent. Now the other option that you can do is you can come over here. You can go to share and you can click a PNG. So it's going to export it. I'm going to airdrop it. 
to my unit. It's popping up, we can hear it, awesome. So it's sent. Now the next step is how I work my files to get them from Procreate into Illustrator and then into Lightburn. So let's get started with that. Over here in my downloads, I have my file. So I brought both the PSD and the PNG over. Let me show you the differences between the two as I work them. With the PSD, there we go. As you can see, it's bringing over all my layers. Now, I don't really need this layer. This is just the base layer that I started with. I'm gonna actually delete that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my design and I know on a Mac it's Command A to select all and Command C to copy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy it. Over here I have my Illustrator, blank document. I'm gonna paste it, Command V. And as we can see, we have our file in here. Now it's not vector at the moment. It's still a, a raster graphic, which means that, you know, if I were to, you know, expand it, we're gonna get some pixelation. You might not see it as much now, but if you're trying to go to print it or whatever, it's not gonna look great. Up here, we have an image trace option. I click on it. Then we click expand. Now it's a vector file. We can see, let me see if I can zoom in there. We can see we have like all these little points. This is telling you, yes, this is vector. If you actually go and you like move one of these points, you're, you know, going to be moving the design. That's the option that I often work with the most. Now with the PNG, it might save a step when you don't have a layered design. I'm just going to pop this one over here. With the PNG, again, similar thing. You can just, you know, do an image trace, expand it. Same, same type of situation. Now, another thing I do like to do is when I'm working with these files, when you image trace it, you end up getting white everywhere, especially if you have little crevices. I don't really like that. So I actually come over to same fill color and I'm selecting all the white. Delete it. Now, as you can see, it's transparent. Another thing that I like doing in Illustrator is with Command Y. This is what they call a, oh, I think it's called like a live mode. I use this and I go into designs to make sure there's no stray accents. You know, there's no little dots in here that I can't see. Um, you know, no lines are jotting out because I do know in Lightburn, sometimes you can get um, an error. And to the best of my knowledge, the frame, I think it's called frame slop error, happens when, you know, you have artwork that might have some weird stuff in it. So just, you know, a precaution, always check your, your live mode. I always take my design, Command C, make a copy, Command V, and paste it. So I have a duplicate. I often apply my offsets in Illustrator just because for me it only takes a couple seconds and if I need to modify it then I do that in Lightburn. But what I'm going to do here is, you know, I have my Pathfinder tool, I merge. So I like to merge it and then I come over here to Unite. It gives me a solid shape. So I'm going to come over here, I'm just going to change the color, I'm going to create a border, you know, just something. You know, this one's, you know, let's just say, you know, it's going to be 25. So I, the border's a stroke. As you can see, I have a solid here and a stroke here. Then I come up here to object, path, outline stroke, merge it, and unite it. Awesome. Then what I do is I come over here, select them both. I have a horizontal align center, then a vertical align center. Going to take this. Command shift loop, bring that to the back. Here we go. This is how I do my offset. So now what I'm gonna do, which is the awesome part about working with Illustrator, is I don't even need to export it. I don't need to save it as an as a SVG, I don't need to save it as an AI or whatever. I can actually copy it and paste it right into Lightburn, which is exactly what I'm gonna be doing. What I'm gonna do is Command V. There we go, we got our design in here, awesome. I like coming up here 
and clicking this little guy. And now I have a close up of my design. So I can see, hey, you know, is anything, you know, wonky in it? Over here, we have our line and fill. Let's see if I can zoom out a little bit so you guys, there we go. So I have my line and fill. And for this area, I'm going to want this engraved. You know, it looks like we have the black set to, you no. Know, so we're going to want this to actually be fill. And then I'm going to want the outline to be line because that's where it's going to cut. I actually have some libraries over here that can be downloaded in the Ohm Tech Facebook group. That is what I use. That's what I used when I started out. And I've just been kind of modifying and adding as I go and, you know, trying different things that I like. So I highly suggest if you're a member in the Facebook group and you have an Ohm Tech machine, definitely download the libraries. They're in the file section. That's what I use. They're awesome. With the acrylic, I have an acrylic section over here. Where is it? It is uh, one eighth. For the fill, I'm going to choose my deep engrave. And for the line, I'm going to choose cut through. So it might take a couple seconds for it to load. And in case you want to see the settings that I use for the fill, I use 180 speed, 28 power. And for the line, which will be the cut, I use 10 speed and 50 power. Now, again, your machine might be different, so you might want to use different settings depending on your material type. You know, this is just what I found works best for me, so feel free to play with whatever works for you. If you actually look at our design, it's, you know, 4.6 inches by 3.8. You know, I think that's a little too big. That's not really what I'm looking for. I want it to be a little bit smaller. So all you have to do if you want to resize it, that's all you have to do. See right here, you can make it large, you can make it small, any size you want. If you were to say, hey, I really want to make this into a keychain, I forgot to, you know, add the little um, the cutout back in Illustrator, it's actually easy enough. You need to change your offset. Oh, if you want to change your offset, ungroup it first. Then you can kind of see, there we go. So say you're like, oh, you know, I, I want more of a border. You can come right over here to offset shapes, click on that, and you can actually make your offset larger. So here, let's say, you know, I want it to be slightly larger. And then all you have to do is go over here and delete the previous line. And there you go. Now you have a slightly larger offset. Say, you know, we want to turn, you know, we want to make this a keychain pin and earring set, which is actually something that I commonly make. I get a lot of great feedback on them. I'm going to just make a couple variations of this. So for a keychain, we're going to need a, a hoop. We're going to need to put an area in here that allows us to get the little keychain shape knocked out so we can attach the jump hoop and all that kind of stuff. What I tend to do is, you know, I don't like putting a, you know, a hoop on top like this because I found it often breaks, especially with the thinner materials. You know, now you're risking, oh, you know, it, it's going to break. I tend to actually bring it more into the design where it's slightly sticking up a bit. Maybe not enough, but, um, you know, just enough so we actually have all this material around us to kind of pick up the slack. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn that the same color. As we can see over here, the layer adjusted. And then I'm going to actually center everything. I want to make sure it's centered. is I'm gonna select these two and I am going to come over here and weld them. And look, now we have our little bump up here. So we can actually put our little keychain. Now make sure when you do this that, you know, when you create a new object that it's going on the right layer. Cause if it accidentally defaults as fill, it's gonna engrave here instead of cut, which we don't want. So there we go, now it's pretty centered. You know, I'm going to say for my keychain, maybe I want it to be about, say, 1.7. There we go. And, you know, that's what I'm going to use for my keychain design. So we're going to put that over here. Now, over here, you know, I have my original. And I always like keeping the original. And what I tend to do 
is I tend to always have a copy over here off the, I guess, artboard you can call it. I know if I ever need to reference back, I have my original original. Now, another thing to keep in mind, which I did forget to mention earlier, is sometimes light burn will create duplicate elements. Um, and you do have to go in there and you do have to delete them. I noticed it a lot with text. For some reason, when I bring in text, I have to go in and delete the little like fills and stuff. This design came through okay, so I didn't have to worry about it. But I always suggest coming up here and checking your preview. For my little earrings, you know, they're pretty small. They're about 0.5. They're tiny. Now with the earrings, I've always noticed that, you know, we're going to probably want a pretty decent offset just because they're small. I'm going to make it a little bit larger. I'm going to make a pin, you know, make it a little smaller. So we have our keychain design, our two little earrings, and our pin. Come up here to preview. They look pretty good. The next step after we get this is we're going to want to load our material in our machine and get that going. So let's step on over to the machine.